Hello everyone, welcome back to another interview question and answer video. In this we will cover Java 8 questions. So before we start, if you are new to the channel, please go ahead and subscribe. So without any further delay, let's start. So whenever you are in the interview and the interviewer asks you like, have you worked on Java 8? and if you say yes then the first question that will come to you will be what are the java 8 features that you have used so you can list down the most important features or whatever features you have already worked on so you can mention like you have worked on functional interfaces default and static methods in the interfaces which were introduced as part of java 8 then we have lambda expressions stream api optional also uh, then we have method reference and introduction of new date and time API. You don't need to explain all of these in the first question itself because the following questions will be based on how you answer this particular question. So whatever topics that you know pretty well, please try to mention them upfront itself so that they can start picking up question from those topic itself. Uh, another very simple question that can be asked is what is the difference between collection API and stream API? So there you can mention that streams do not store the data but process it. On the other hand, in the collection API, we used to store the data. Second, you can say streams are not modifiable but collections are. Like we can add or update the elements of collection but not stream. Collection API was introduced in JDK 1.2 but the stream API was introduced in Java, uh, JDK 1.8. Collection objects are created with eager approach, but stream objects are created lazily. What that means? So whenever we are trying to create object of any collection API, like array list, suppose those will be created as soon as we uh, add the element to them or we create it using the new keyword itself. But in case of stream objects, those are not created eagerly. So those are created lazily. What that means? Because in case of stream, there are intermediate and terminal operations. So until the terminal operation is called, the intermediate operations will not be executed. So that kind of uh, creation is known as lazily created. Streams are actually used to process the collections itself. So when you say you have already worked on Java 8 in your projects, then there are few topics which are very important in Java 8, one of which will be Lambda expressions. So you will definitely get questions on Lambda expressions. So the first question that can come to you could be, what is a Lambda expression? So Lambda expressions are nothing but a method without any name. It's, it is also known as anonymous methods. So in other words, Lambda expression is a function that can be passed around and referenced as an object. So how it can be done? And uh, <clears throat> what is the structure of lambda expression? So you can say we have a list of parameters enclosed in the round brackets. Then we have a lambda symbol, which is hyphen and greater than. And after that, whatever implementation, those will be followed in the expression section here. This is how a typical lambda expression should look like. Another important topic is functional interface. So definitely you will also be getting questions from this, like what are functional interfaces? So functional interfaces are the typical interfaces itself, but with one exception that they can have only a single abstract method. It can contain only one abstract method. If you try to add any other abstract method inside a functional interface, which is annotated with an annotation of add the rate functional interface, the compiler will start giving you an uh, compilation error itself. Even though using this annotation of functional at the rate functional interface is not mandatory, but if we use it, then we are making sure that no one will be able to add any other abstract method to that functional interface itself. As now you have already explained the interviewer that what are functional interfaces and what are lambda expressions. So the follow up question could be how the functional interfaces and lambda expressions are related to each other. So the lambda expressions can be used to represent the instance of functional interface. What we have seen in case of functional interface is that it can only have a single abstract method. So whatever implementation that we need to provide for that abstract method for that we can make use of lambda expression itself. Now let's see this with an example also. So here I have my functional interface uh, whose name is my interface. It is having one default method and let's ignore it as of now. 
and I have one abstract method which is returning integer name is sum and it is expecting two parameters. So in my main class, I am creating an object of my interface obj and that I am assigning a lambda expression there. So here a and b, they will be replacing these a and b variable in this sum method and whatever is written after this lambda symbol that will act as the implementation of this sum method. So here what we are doing, we are returning a plus b. So here you can see all this code you can say is uh, now pointing to obj object. Now we can pass it or use it as an object itself. So what we are doing obj.sum and by passing the two variables we will be able to call the implementation of sum from my interface which is written in the form of lambda expression. Another change which was uh, happened in case of interfaces in uh, Java 8 was introduction of default methods. So we have already seen in our previous example that there was one default method. Here it is returning uh, integer. Uh, the name is multiply accepting two variables and uh, two parameters and returning the multiplication result and a default keyword is used here so as we already know in case of interfaces before java 8 it was not possible to provide the body of a function but using the default methods we can provide body of a function itself like an implementation there itself in the interface so that thing was introduced in java 8 so the question would be why default methods were introduced what was the need of default methods so default methods enables you to add new functionality to the existing interfaces and ensure compatibility with code written for the older versions for those interfaces so let's first consider a scenario where default method is not there and you want to add a functionality to existing interface suppose there is one interface my interface and it has been implemented in 10 different classes so if I want to add any new functionality or any new uh, method uh, signature in the my interface, then what will happen whenever I add it, I uh, all the 10 classes which are implementing that interface, they will start giving me compilation error because they have to override this particular method of that interface. So to overcome this problem, like to add a new functionality and still keeping up with the uh, older code itself, the default methods were introduced. We have already discussed a lot about functional interfaces. In Java 8 itself, they have provided a long list of uh, built-in functional interfaces which we can use depending on our requirement, out of which one is predicate. The interviewer might ask you, what is a predicate? So the predicate is a predefined functional interface in Java. It can accept one argument and return a Boolean value. It is used to test a particular condition based on the data that we are providing as an argument. It has one abstract method whose name is test which accepts one uh, argument of any type and always returns a result in the boolean. There is another functional interface whose name is function. So what exactly is the difference between function and predicate? That can also be a question. So there is a very small difference between function and predicate. Both of these uh, function and predicate, they accept one argument and return something. But the difference is in the type of returning. In case of predicate, we have seen it will always return you a Boolean result. But what if we want to uh, calculate or process something and return that value itself or do some other processing and return some other type of data. So in those cases, we can make use of function functional interface because it can accept one type of argument and it can return same or another type of arguments uh, return type as well the name of this abstract method which is available in function is apply so if you are uh, three to five years or more years of experience then you can expect few architecture related questions from java 8 as well one of which could be related to the memory model changes which happened in java 8 so the question would be, is there any change in memory model in Java 8 from the previous versions? So yes, there is a change in case of Java 8. <clears throat> Before Java 8 itself, there was a component perm gen space. So that particular uh, component is used to store the metadata like bytecodes, names and GID information. So that particular component was completely removed in case of JDK 8. The Java classes metadata now stored in native heap and this space is now known as metaspace. 
what is the advantage of using meta space over perm gen space is the size of perm gen space was fixed so whenever uh, the heap memory is full or the memory is full then uh, the chances of getting out of memory error was higher but in case of meta space is it is making use of disk space as well so it grows automatically by default and will be garbage collected so this decreases the out of memory issues as it grows dynamically another question that could be asked is what is the difference between iterator and split rater so iterator only iterates elements individually split rater does it in the bulk too iterator uses external iteration but split rater use internal iterator is a universal but split rater is not universal iterator does not support parallel processing but split rater does support parallel processing because it was introduced in java 8 so by it does it by splitting the given element set so that each set can be processed individually <coughs> another important topic which was introduced in java 8 was method reference so what exactly is a method reference method reference is used to refer method of a functional interface it is represented by using double colon operator so it's it will be like object colon colon method name the most common example which i have also used in my previous videos is uh, instead of using system dot out dot print ln and then provide the values in for each what i have used i have used system dot out as an object and after that colon colon and print ln as its method so what it will do in the for each if i write this statement then print ln method of system dot out will be called for all the element and all those elements will be passed as an argument another important question is how the method reference and lambda expressions are related to each other so method reference is compact and easy form of lambda expression itself so then why we are not using a method reference all the time because it's not applicable e the method reference is only applicable when each time when we are using lambda expression just to refer to a method so i will again take an example of system.out.println so suppose in our lambda expression we are only doing this every single time so in those scenarios it is better to use method reference than using lambda expression because it will um, make your code look more cleaner now you can expect few questions from the stream api functions as well out of which i will list on few of them here and a few other with the uh, advanced topics we will cover in our upcoming videos so the first question here is what is the difference between skip 5 and limit 5 so these two methods are uh, intermediate methods in uh, uh, stream api in java 8 so what skip n will do skip and uh, n is the number that we'll provide it will return the remaining element after discarding the first n elements so in this case skip 5 what it will do it will discard the first 5 element and return the remaining element starting with 6th element itself and then what is limit 5 so limit n actually will return the first n element by discarding all the elements comes after n so skip is like uh, we will cut the list from the beginning but limit is like we will only take that amount that chunk of uh, elements from the stream which is mentioned in the limit itself so in case of limit 5 we will only return the first five element from the stream next question could be what is the difference between find any and find first so find any will return any element from the given stream and also find any shows a non-deterministic behavior what that means non-deterministic means uh, we cannot determine which particular element it should return because it's find any so it will pick up any element from the stream itself and if we see what is find first it will return the first element of the given stream and find first shows the deterministic behavior that means we know that it will always return the first element which is available in the stream unlike find any another big addition to the java 8 was its new date and time api which was introduced so why the new date and time api was introduced because we already have a uh, calendar and java.util.date was already there to handle all those things then why this new date and time api was introduced it was introduced to overcome the issues which were there in the previous api so if we talk about you can talk about performance the java 8 apis are better in terms of performance uh, also you can mention the standards java 8 date and time api comply with the iso standards the another important uh, aspect was thread safe as well 
the older date and time API is mutable and not thread safe. But in case of Java 8 date and time API, those are thread safe. Also, there is uh, one enhancement for the time zone management as well. In the new API, we have better time zone management. We have local date time, local date, local time, and few of the latest core API classes of Java 8. That is it for this video. We will cover more advanced topics in the Java 8, which could be asked in the interview in our upcoming sessions. So if you like the video, please go ahead, like and subscribe. Till then, keep learning. See you next time.